I'm not sure how many of you saw this. This happened right before I came on stream. But Justin Barragona tweets out, Tucker Carlson calls Ken Klippenstein some stooge at The Intercept, some joke billionaire-funded website because Ken knows how to file a good FOIA request and his producer doesn't. So we'll watch the video, but... Tucker Carlson is trying to dunk on an independent journalist all because he filed a FOIA request. Like, that's literally what happened here. Uh, it's to my understanding that Tucker Carlson made the claim that the NSA is spying on him. He then filed a FOIA request. And then Ken Klippenstein filed a FOIA request of his FOIA request. And now he's getting attacked by Tucker Carlson. So let's watch the uh, the clip here, and then I'll give you some more context. There's an article. I mean, it's from the Washington Post. Not the greatest source in the world, but just so we have some backstory as to what Tucker Carlson is freaking out about. Uh, but uh, let's see his attack on fellow comrade Ken Klippenstein. Well, we've been spied on by the Biden administration. There's not a lot you can do about it. You can make noise about it and seem outraged. But in the end, you don't really have a lot of recourse. You learn a lot about your democracy when that happens. Join the club, bitch. We're all getting spied on by the NSA. Join the fucking club. Happens to you. One thing you can do is he should be using his platform to advocate uh, advocate against NSA spying. And perhaps he's done that in the past. But like he could use this moment to educate his audience about civil liberties and the need to end NSA spying, the need to uh, free Edward Snowden because what he revealed to the American public is incredibly important and he's getting prosecuted for this. But what does this dumb fuck do? He cries and makes himself the victim. It, it, like, it, it's insufferable. The uh, persecution complex from conservatives is so insufferable and I, I, it's, it drives me nuts file a Freedom of Information Act request seeking any call records, texts, or emails that the NSA got from you, or in this case, us. And so we did that. We haven't heard back from the NSA, probably won't for a long time. They didn't promptly respond, however, to some stooge at The Intercept, which is some joke billionaire-funded website. Okay. Who funds Fox News? Is Fox News not a billionaire-funded enterprise? And... I love how there's this assumption, like it's a guilt by association assumption that because Ken Klippenstein works for The Intercept, that's funded by billionaires, which is bad, by the way, um, if it's true, that Ken Klippenstein automatically is like some establishment hack, um, more so than Tucker Carlson, who is the fucking heir to what is it, Swanson Foods? Uh, I mean, this this logic here is moronic. It's like saying, hey, you Amazon warehouse workers need to shut the fuck up and stop complaining because you work for a trillion dollar company. Okay, sure. Uh, Ken Klippenstein might work for a billion billionaire funded project, but Ken Klippenstein is an independent journalist. It's to my understanding that Ken Klippenstein is a freelance journalist. And when you're a freelance journalist, you write articles and you kind of shop your articles around. Now, perhaps he does work for The Intercept, but that doesn't mean that Ken Klippenstein is inherently bad. You know, I, I can't stand The Washington Post, right? I just referenced my um, disillusionment with them, but still, that doesn't mean that journalists like Jeff Stein aren't bad or, or, or um, aren't good, I should say, right? It, it, like, sure, there's going to be systemic issues at these outlets. You can argue that there are systemic issues, but then to just, like, automatically assume that all of them are bad is um it's it's moronic right and the same even is true for fox news as much as i loathe fox news hosts and the overwhelming majority of them are terrible you still have some individuals who are actually reasonable like uh, juan williams and um there's another guy but i'm blanking on his name he used to be part of tyt network richard something uh but you know it's it's just like this is elementary thinking like this is incredibly naive and stupid and i love how this multi-millionaire is trying to make it seem as if ken klippenstein of all people is the establishment when this motherfucker the number one news show uh, news host in the country you're the establishment bitch this guy filed a foia request about our foia request and then wrote on twitter this i've obtained under foia the foia request tucker carlson sent the nsa Base. What's wrong so with that? What's interesting is, and it really does kind of crystallize the total degradation of American journalism. The Intercept was. Why does it characterize how journalism has uh, degraded if he filed a FOIA request on your FOIA request? Like, you're trying to turn this into a big thing. You're saying, I'm the victim, and here you have a journalist who's trying to find out details about this, and yet you're shitting on him. 
Yeah, and, and look at the picture that they used of Ken. They're trying to make him look like this uh, goofball. Ken Klippenstein is like one of the most uh, based journalists in the country, and his journalism skills are uh, absolutely chad, whereas we have fucking virgin Tucker Carlson who wouldn't know real journalism if his life depended on it. So uh, the fact that he's dunking on my boy Ken, it pisses me off. Like, this fucking asshole right here is trying to claim that Ken is the establishment. Like, if you believe that Ken Klippenstein is the establishment, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> it's founded to push back against the, the surveillance state. It was founded by Glenn Greenwald. And now, of course, they're busy covering it up and cheering it on. You wonder, instead of foying our FOIA requests, what are you going to find there? Nothing. Why not figure out what the NSA is doing, the largest intel agency in the world? That Why don't you figure out what the NSA is doing? You have the number one news show in America. And rather than actually educating your audience, you're fear-mongering. You're hysterical over a, uh, the NSA spying on you. You spend how much time talking about fucking critical race theory and shit like that? So don't tell Ken Klippenstein what he should be doing, motherfucker. You have a bigger platform than Ken Klippenstein. Don't scold other people as if you're so serious yourself. Get off your high horse. That might occupy your time. That might be a virtuous thing to do. It doesn't occur because, of course, they support it and it's successful. Yes, Ken Klippenstein supports you getting spied on. I mean, has, has Tucker Carlson ever cared about NSA spying before it affected him personally? I'm genuinely asking, because maybe he, maybe he did. Maybe he is consistent here, more consistent than I, I thought. But I mean, I, I'm sorry. If, if you have the biggest platform and all you talk about is dumb fucking bullshit and you scream about AOC and, you know, uh, bullshit cancel culture, woke bullshit, you have no room to talk. Jonathan Turley is a law professor at George Washington University. He knows a lot. Jesus Christ. Look at this fucking goober. So I want to get to Ken Klippenstein uh, and his response here. Where did I defend the NSA, Tucker Carlson? The whole reason I filed the FOIA request is because I thought it was possible they had collected on you. I speculated it was incidental and wanted to learn more. Now, did the NSA collect Tucker Carlson's metadata or spy on him? I mean, it's highly likely they are spying on fucking everyone. This is what the Snowden revelations taught all of us. The funny thing is I was one of seemingly few people who actually thought it was plausible that the NSA could have incidentally collected on Tucker Carlson. So I foiled his FOIA to find out specifics. But this is all pro wrestling to him. So he can't imagine journalistic curiosity. Yeah, that's exactly it. This is uh, pro wrestling. That's the best way to put it. Um, I do want to get to this article because... Just so we have a little bit more background here on what the fuck Tucker Carlson is screeching about. So this is from uh, Philip Bump, who says somehow Fox News host Tucker Carlson learned last month. Let me let me make it a little bit bigger for you all. Uh, that the U.S. government knew he was trying to set up an interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Carlson, or people working for him, had contacted intermediaries with connections to the Kremlin, according to reporting from Axios, and that outreach came to the government's attention. Let me just pause right here, because do you remember when, uh, I think it was John Oliver, he interviewed Edward Snowden back in... Oh, fuck, I don't remember when it was. It was like 2017 or something like that. And automatically, he knew that he would be on like the NSA's spying list or whatever, or some watch list. Did Tucker Carlson come out to defend John Oliver when that was the case? Don't think so. Don't think so. That by itself is not surprising. Intelligence agencies should certainly be expected to be tracking communications involving foreigners linked to the Russian government. And it would not be surprising for even U.S. citizens with strong ties to Putin to be under some sort of surveillance. If you or I email with Putin's scheduler, the odds are good that the National Security Agency will be aware of that interaction thanks to its near certain monitoring of that person. What the NSA is not supposed to know is who we are, assuming that you, like me, are a U.S. citizen. The identities of Americans swept up in surveillance of foreign nationals are supposed to be kept hidden, masked as the vernacular has it, unless there's an intelligence need to figure out who we are. That's the mystery of Tucker Carlson's situation. Did someone in the government alert Carlson that his communications had been intercepted? And if so, how and why did they know? So here's where we get to him being super hyperbolic on purpose. 
Uh, all of this came to light when Carlson made the extraordinary accusation on his show that the NSA was monitoring our electronic communications and is planning to leak them in an attempt to take this show off the air. So this is basically like if you read the subtext, this is him saying, look, folks, we're such good truth tellers that the deep state is coming after us and they're going to try to get us deplatformed. So I think that there is a likelihood that the NSA spied on him when he did come into contact with the scheduler for Putin. But is it some sort of nefarious plot to take down Tucker Carlson? No, I don't believe that's the case. He hasn't presented any evidence that that is the case. He said he learned this from a whistleblower. Then, using his claim that the Biden administration was spying on him, he warned his viewers that the administration would surely not hesitate to spy on them as well. It's already happening, Tucker. That's the thing that's so frustrating to me. It's happening. He just doesn't care about it until it happens to him. Oh, yeah. Now, it's funny. This reminds me. Does anyone remember back in, I think it was 2014, 2013, when Dianne Feinstein was was basically a proponent of NSA spying. She defended it, and then all of a sudden, when she found out that the NSA was spying on U.S. senators, all of a sudden she's like, wait, we need to do an investigation. We need to find out what's happening because this is unacceptable. This is a violation of civil, civil liberties and the Fourth Amendment. And of course, I'm paraphrasing what she said, but folks like this, conservatives like Tucker Carlson and Dianne Feinstein, who is a conservative, uh, albeit to a lesser extent, they don't care about things unless it happens to them. And this is why they're so fucking insufferable. So that's all I got to say. I mean, this dipshit is attacking the one journalist who's looking into his claims that the NSA spied on him, and so they foiled his FOIA request. Big fucking deal. Big deal. Get over it.